Father, He's Son, and He's Holy Spirit. He's the Son of God. There's no one higher, no one lower in power and in reign. He rules it all. The great promise. If you look at verse 18, it says, And I also say to you that you, Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He wanted Peter to know because of your faithfulness and your obedience, I'm, I'm a plan of place and you've seen through spiritual eyes what's coming. Man couldn't reveal it to you because his time hadn't come yet. They were still looking for an earthly ruler. But his job was to show us that there's a place for us and it's not here on earth we only here but for a little while amen try as it may this world cannot shake Jesus see we're denying him right now but he loves us so much he's still staying right there with us because he didn't come to condemn the world he came to save the world even those who do not believe in him or are compelled by him see even there in the son of God as he was sharing the scripture in its fulfillment. Even the Romans, even the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were amazed at how he knew the scripture. How he shared it with them. They marveled at how he quoted the scribes. But that marveling went from being one who praised him to being one who hated him even more. They despised him. Not just the Romans, even the Jews, his own people. Oh, they wanted to stone him, man. They wanted to rock him. They wanted to get rid of him. Right there. They wanted to crucify him. But his time hadn't come. So he disappeared. A few days later, they brought him before Pilate. Couldn't find no fault in it. What had Jesus done? What lie had he told? What had he stole? Who had he hurt? The problem was the Jews wanted to do their thing and not do God's thing, so they wanted to get him out of the way. It was Passover time. They were ready to celebrate the great Messiah, the Passover, that, 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 that exodus from Egypt. But they forgot one thing. He was the Passover. How are you going to celebrate the Passover and you can't celebrate with Jesus? Man, they wanted to get him out of the way. They didn't want him out of town. They wanted him dead. We get it like that. We get it twisted sometimes, brother. We get so caught up in our thing. God right there talking to us. Holy Spirit right there working on us. We block all that out. I got this. I don't need you right now. Let, let me get this straight myself. That ain't faith. That's sin. Even Pilate, a Roman, tried to give him an out. He said, I, I got two men before you. One's a murderer. One is Jesus. He's guilty of no crime that I can find. Which one you want to let go? They chose to let go of the murderer and still have Jesus crucified. How can you be so wrong? And we're no different. If the gospel has been made plain to you, you have no excuse. 
showing your good Christian love through this good hot nutritional meal, sharing God's word with you to its fulfillment in spirit and in truth. This is not mycology. This is King James Version. I'm not making this up. I'm not putting my own to it. I'm reading straight from the Bible. You know it's real. I'm trying to make it plain, but it's real. All right. They found him guilty, but he was guilty of nothing. Other than he loved us so much that he was willing to come down and suffer for us. They made him bear his cross. And that cross was heavy. And while he was bearing that cross, they was kicking on him and spitting on him and throwing stuff at him. It was tough, man. You just have to imagine the pain and the suffering he went through for us. We were undeserving, but he loved us that much. And they led him on to Calvary. I'm getting ready to close. At Calvary, man was doing his worst. We was trying to get rid of Jesus. But God was busy doing his best. He was providing a lamb for us in Jesus. There on Calvary, they nailed nails in his hand, nails in his feet. They pierced his side. He suffered, he bled. But even in a dying hour, he wasn't on Calvary by himself. There was three crosses on Calvary. Two thieves in Jesus. One of them thieves was so caught up in himself and what he got going on, he wanted to get a bell out. He wasn't caught up in the crime he was committing. He was looking for somebody to pay his bail to get him out temporarily. So he told Jesus, if you be who they say you are, come down from there. Save yourself and then save us too. The other thief looked at him and said, don't you even feel God? This man has done nothing wrong, but we're guilty of what we've done. And he looked at Jesus. And he said, Jesus, when you come into your paradise, remember me. Remember me. Man. And right there at a dying hour, Jesus stopped dying before a moment to tell this thief that today you will be with me in paradise. See, he had been washed clean, saved on the cross. He wasn't trying to get his bail paid. He was trying to get his soul saved. We get it mixed up, folks. Some of us need to do a couple nights in jail so we understand that there's a price for sin. Some of us need to do some time. That time you spend in jail or prison may change your life. The Lord allows you to go through some things. But you can't get even caught up on that. You got to know us about your spiritual, spiritual being. Where you at? Do you believe in it? Do you believe that in, in my corruption and all my wrongness that Jesus is real, that he can change me, he can wash me, he can make me clean? If he did it for that thief on the cross, he can do it for you. So he died there on the cross. Yes, he did. And they buried him in a bar tomb. I'm getting close. Take a chance. And he laid there three days. But early on that third day, he, he rose. He rose with all power in his hand. And he didn't stop there. He, 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 told the, he told the apostles, go back and wait in the upper room. Uh, because they were still confused. They was upset because Jesus was gone. And they were trying to figure out who was going to fix all this mess that was going on. So he felt he knew he had to share some more with him. So they went to the upper room. And he appeared again. Touch my hands, touch my side, feel me. I'm bone, I'm flush. In fact, he asked them, do you have something to eat? Ghosts can't eat. But God can do it all. He rose and he broke bread with them. And he shared the Holy Spirit with them. So and once they got that Holy Spirit indwelled in them, they understood 
See, when you get that Holy Spirit, you're a different person. You're washed. You know it ain't about you. You know that you might have some flaws. You might make a mistake. But you serve a God that loved you so much that he was willing to die for you. That he ascended into heaven to prepare a new place for you. But he didn't leave you lonely. He left the Holy Spirit with you to comfort you, to get you through. The devil telling you to do it. The Holy Spirit is right there telling you not to. You just got to choose which one you're going to obey. Oh, no, I ain't no lie. I didn't have no choice. Man, you put me in a corner. No, oh, I got to do it. You don't have to do it. All you got to do is trust God. He will fight your body. As we get ready to close. Take your time. If you've never accepted Jesus as head of your life, and Reverend Mike has made it plain, who is Jesus? And you willing to accept Jesus as Christ and head of your life, this moment could be life changing for you. All you gotta do is raise your hand and we'll see you. You can go from being one left in the dark, in the cold, shut off and shut out, to having a savior. That's what see you through. Do we have one? Amen. Amen. I see you, brother. Amen. Maybe you believe him. But you're also willing to admit that some things happened last night or last week or this morning and somebody tried to throw you off the spiritual journey. But you ain't going to let the devil win. You realize all you got to do is repent. All you got to do is ask for prayer. And you can be washed clean right here in this kitchen between cornbreads and collard greens. We ain't serving them today, but I just like saying that. Because it's just that simple. Yes, sir. While you're here eating this meal, we're trying to help you save yourself. We're trying to get you renewed and back in fellowship with Christ. Amen. Do we have any that want prayer? All you got to do is raise your hand. We'll pray for you. Anybody? See your sister back there. Let's give her a hand. You raising your sister? I'm looking. All right, I'm like, like, like Paul with King Agrippa. I almost got you. I uh, would to God that you would both almost and all together feel as I feel. But these shades, it, it costs to serve Jesus. You got to be willing to, to suffer a little bit with it. We got another brother. Let's give him a hand. Amen. If you ask for prayer, I'm going to ask that you come down here and we're going to pray for you. I want you to disposition yourself a little bit. If you're still thinking about it, you got time. I, I want you to know that meal can't save you. What we're doing here, this word of God can save you. And, and we want to bless you. We want to save some lives today. Do we have any others that want to come on down? Come on down, sister. Come on down. I got him. Look at that. Look at God. Look at God. Oh, Lord. Two for one. The favor two. When, when you believe in this word of God, when you're sharing it with a conviction that people are hearing and it can change them, it changes them. There's nothing worse than a preacher that preaches don't believe in what he preaches. Amen. We're going to be obedient. Got three. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for the sister that came down. I can just feel her spirit. Thank you, Jesus. She, she helped me, Lord, today. We thank you for the brother that's standing here. He's always faithful. And the sister that come down with a baby, that's fine. God is blessing her. Yeah. Oh, she felt the Holy Spirit. It just caught her. And she couldn't deny it any longer that she loves him. The other sister right here, I didn't get any names today, but you know when it came down. I want you to know that the heavens are watching you. Yes. The heavens are rejoicing over you. The Bible tells us that there's more joy in heaven over one repentant sinner than a multitude of the right. It's not that you're short, it's that you're whole. And you want to be made even more whole spiritually when you need her today. By you humbling yourself, by you dispositioning yourself and coming down and being witnesses for Jesus Christ, I want you to know you've been washed. When you leave here today, you're a new creation. You got power, you got holy power. You proved in this kitchen that it's not just a meal, it's the word that saves you. Yes. I want you to leave here today feeling strong, feeling your hearts burn, feeling that the spirit touching today right here in this kitchen. Psalm 
didn't come down, but we felt it. Pray, Lord, for these four. The five count the baby. We thank you, Lord, for them. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for our pastor, Lord. We thank you for staff. We thank you for all that's going on in this body of Christ. God, we commit it all to you. We know Jesus is Christ. We know he's the Father. We know he's the Son. We know he's the Holy Spirit. These are all blessed we ask to pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful day. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. You got a DVD playing? Yeah. They're going to DVD too. Let's see you play both. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? I got a few more left. Want a CD? All right. Okay. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. God hold you. Wonderful day. Wonderful day. God bless you. You're also my brother. Here's my shoulder. You can lean.